Welcome to The Lowdown, brought to you by Unibet. I'm Dev Sarni, and joining me today is a man who many people are calling Stoke's answer to marvellous Marvin Hagler. It is, of course, Nathan the Hitman Healy. How are you, mate? Hey, mate. Hey. I haven't seen many comparisons to Mar- Marvin Agel, but I'll say that, mate. I'll say that. Yeah, I, I, saw a tw- I saw a tweet pop up, so I thought, Let- let's use that. Let's yeah. use that. Yeah. It wasn't you, was taking it? A mic, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't me, mate. You might have been probably taking a mic, to be fair, but, but we'll take it. Oh, How's no, life, mate? I, I go on, go on. It must be the high socks. I wear high socks to Marvin Agel. She wear high socks as well. That That could be the comparison. It, it yeah, could well yeah. be that. It could well be that. <laughs> um, but tell me, it's, it's it's all happening. You're back, March 25th. It's Jack Flatley again. Give me your thoughts heading into this one. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Obviously, first time I'm officially headlining. Like before, I've been topping the book before, but unofficially, just because I've taken that many people there, that they obviously, uh, Frank and everyone's put me on last, but this time I'm officially headlining and something I always wanted to do. And obviously, I think... It makes for a great fight as well with with the Jack Flatley rematch. So obviously, with some unanswered questions. Well, not unanswered in my head. I knew which way the fight was going, but obviously, on on Twitter, following the fight and stuff, there was like this narrative that he was going to come in strong and then take over somehow, which he would have had to have won every single round for the last five rounds to basically draw it, in my opinion. Like so, let alone win, but. Who knows? Who knows? But that, that's what makes it a bit exciting because obviously those questions weren't answered because it ended short, shortly. Have you watched it back? And if so, how, how many times? Yeah, I've watched it back. I've probably watched it, probably watched it back probably three times. So I haven't watched it back that much. I, I, it wasn't a terribly exciting fight because the, the, it was, I, I was keeping the distance and the range in the first fight, just working them out for the first few rounds, obviously to pick the pace up for the second half of the fight. But obviously that never happened because that's where I started in the in round five because when I started throwing more combinations and I was moving more and that's obviously where the the, the he came in with the head and obviously the head clash happened. But no, it's um yeah, I think I think this one will be good because obviously he's going to have a different strategy, no doubt, coming into this fight. He's probably going to start quicker, and I think it just make for it. I think it'll make for a really good, exciting start. What makes you think he'll have a different strategy then? If in his head. As he said, he felt he was coming on. Um, surely things were sort of going to plan somewhat until the, the head clash, right? Yeah, I was going to say, when you said in his head, I thought you were doing a great pun there again, mate. Right? <laughs> Can't but, help but, but, it, but Yeah, but, but it's... Uh, well, in the first fight, he didn't really do much in the first four rounds. Like, he was trying to, but I was moving away and catching him with the jab and keeping the range. So he, he, he couldn't do the same thing again. And, it, and, it, and if he does, then obviously the same thing is going to happen. But then, but maybe the plan would be to do the same thing again and then take me to the deep waters, as, as was mentioned before, and just keep the exact same game plan as before, provided he believes that I actually was going to fade in the last stage of the fight. But only he knows that, and I know that, in terms of what was going to happen in that second stage. So it's very interesting. Yeah, it does the same as he, he, the, the original game plan that he had. Except for this time, there's no egg clash, so we can take with deep wars, or he starts faster. But it's a very long fight. Ten rounds is a very long time to to be fighting. So, yeah, it's um, it'd be interesting. What are you like in deep waters, Nathan Heaney? I've been, I've been in good hard fights before. Like I think in my seventh fight when I fought for the Midlands Area title, I was in a proper back and forth in that one, and. Real, real, like I hit him in the first round, he hit me in the second round, I hit him in the third, he hit me in the fourth, and it was really cut. And at the end of round four, Steve sat me on the stone and said, You're doing exactly what I told you not to do. And that's when I switched everything up, got a real good second wind, and just totally dominated the last six rounds essentially. So, and, and I've always finished strong, I always finish strong in fights. I pride myself on being very well conditioned, and yeah, I think that's one of my strengths. One of the uh, one of the differences this time is that you're headlining, right? So this is kind of this is your show. Um, the the first fight was on the Joyce Parker show, and I understand your fans perhaps weren't as close that night as they will be on March the twenty fifth. Could be a bit of a difference. What do you think? A massive difference. The the, the fact that it was a completely different because it was close to two thousand Stokies there that night, and and although they sounded incredible because of the distance where they were from the ring. Which they were quite a way away. It wasn't as intimidating as what obviously 
Telford is like because it's a very compact arena. The acoustics in there are incredible. Obviously, you were there when I fought Ramirez, and the atmosphere was electric. There's even more people there this time. Probably an extra 200, 300 people, more people than there was last time. So it's it'll be very... Yeah, I don't care who you are. That will be intimidating. Like Or, or at least every time a shot lands and the crowd erupts. I mean, on the, grandstand, the flip side, you could look at it as you want to silence the crowd. But I know my guys, as you saw with that Ramirez one, I got put down in the first round. They never stopped singing all the way through. They, they, they just... Every single punch that I threw, they were with me. So... Yeah, it's gonna. It, it will make for a very good atmosphere. Do you feel as though he didn't get the full taste of the Stokies the first time around? Oh, oh, definitely, definitely not. But in, in as well, like I think he'd fought at the Manchester Arena probably two or three times, something like that. He's been there before. I've never been to other than watching a fight at the Manchester Arena. I've never been there as a fighter. I didn't know what the back back rooms were like. The walk to the ring, everything was brand new to me. I, I loved it. Man, it, it was amazing. I loved every second of it, but. But this time, I've been to Salford twice before. Um, he, he mentioned about it being in my backyard, which I don't agree with that, because although it's third, I think it's 15 miles away logistically, it's actually a 45-minute drive from Stoke. So it's not close. It's still, it's it's a good way people, for, to, to, it's a place where people have got to drive quite a way to come to see, support me. So, but th- it's an environment that I've been there twice before. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. When when the uh, the first fight, when there was sort of fallout from it, you and Jack were going back and forth on social media a bit. And one of the things you'd said was, you know, move on. You're going to get your payday elsewhere. So I was a little bit surprised to suddenly see this fight scheduled again for the rematch. Why has that happened? The, the, the main reason, Devin, is because I don't get drawn in. People don't make decisions for me based on Twitter. Like, I make decisions that but when it comes down to it. So I don't need his seconds man piping up, oh, we were going to batty and this and that. And then Jack saying that, like, potentially bottle this and all this kind of stuff. That's not the case at all. The fact of the matter is, like, my career has gone well, really well. I've I've, I've taken each step that's come along and I've passed each stage as well. And it's just one of them, like, when I sat down with George and spoke to George, it just made sense. Obviously, he wanted me to be a headline in that. And I think the Jack Flatley just makes sense because... Yeah, there was that little back and forth online. But obviously now this is for, for both of us to put it to bed and to prove who's, who's the better man. And how do you feel about Jack as a as a bloke now that you, you had a bit of a fight build up around him? And Yeah, yeah it, it's like anything. I, I totally get it. Like, at the end of the day, as I mentioned before, pe- people do want paydays for him, but he also does want the title as well. Obviously, we're fighting for a new title this time in WBA Consensual, so he wants that title. He... He's obviously been a former English champion. He knows what it's like to win a title. And obviously, he, he's not there just for the money. He's there for the pride and, and for the for the plaudits that will come from beating me as well. And they probably think they've got the game plan to do it. But yeah, it's it, I'm always going to get that, Dev. I'm all, because some people just they just do it. Like they, they, I've been called out quite a number of times by different fighters. And then I've seen them fight people, lose, and now they disappeared off the face of the boxing earth. It's just... It just is what it is. That's the game I'm in. Well, he said he's coming to get what he should have got last time. That's what I saw him post uh, on his Instagram. What do you make of that? And what are your plans for this fight? Yeah, it's like we we can all say like, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. It's it is like I don't see what was happening in the first fight to to, to show anything that he was going to take the title at it. I don't, I don't see what was there in the first place for that to, to even think he's... Like, I could see in his eyes at the end of round four and in his legs what how he was feeling the pace. And, yeah, but, but it's one of them. When you have, like, hindsight and you're all sitting back and you're like, oh, you would have done this, you would have done that. It's easy to think it. It's totally different when you're in the ring. So it's... um, I'm just going to apply myself the way I need to apply myself, do exactly what me and Steve have been working on and, and, just, and just do what I need to do. And... And if I'm to be the champion, I'll be the champion. It looks like you're taking it seriously. I mean, you obviously always take it seriously, but I've seen there's been some good sparring coming in, a bit of Sergio Garcia, a bit of Aaron McKenna. You're you're putting in the work, aren't you, Dave? Oh, yeah. One hundred percent like yeah, Sergio Garcia, relentless, very strong lad. Obviously, European champion. Uh, Aaron McKenna, very, very big, strong lad. I uh, I've I've got what's I've got the people there to make the worst case scenario 
So I'm ready for everything on finance because they are very good lads and they're very strong as well. And I'm very strong myself. So I've been performing well with these boys. And and yeah, just like like I say, can't be good sparring. And especially in the, in the weeks leading up to the fights, it's, it's been ideal. I've seen your uh, social media. There's pictures of envelopes like coming up to up to here as you as you sat down. You've you've done it again, haven't you? I mean, how how many tickets are we talking this time? Well, over one thousand three hundred so far for me. Uh, but like, I, I was sent Tony sent me an extra fifty tickets yesterday afternoon. So I've got them. I haven't even shared that out yet. That I've got them extra ones. It's just I'll probably I'm going to deliver these ones this week. I've got two days left of delivery, so I've done. A certain amount of postcodes Monday, Tuesday, and I finished some today. And I sent a load out first class of the delivery for everyone. Like people come, like there's loads of people come from Dundee, Devon, bloody Nottingham, Leicester, everywhere. It's mad, it's madness. I don't know whether these guys are Stokies that move from the area and they're just coming to the fights or whether they are just supporting. But these guys always come with fights, so it's mad that they travel so far and in, and in, in every single time. So. Yeah, you can imagine what one and a half thousand Stokies is going to sound like in that arena. Yeah, even expat Stokies, it sounds like you've got you've got them dotted around the country. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's it, mate. That's it. It's it. They're all over the place, and yeah, I, I obviously I appreciate every single one of them, and it's yeah, it's worth it's worth it. I, I love it, but but it's weird. It doesn't feel like five months ago that we well five and a half months ago that we last boxed. It's gone so quick. Are you um? Are you going to let all these guys sing Delilah? Uh, like, like I saw a video that Frank did the other day. He's like, oh, don't, don't worry, we've got Delilah. He said, we're not rugby. <laughs> like, to me, it's like, it's, I was thinking, go on, Frank. <laughs> Mate, you, could, you couldn't stop Delilah. You couldn't stop. The thing is, people probably go home after my fire nights and they, and they have nightmares about Delilah because they probably hear it sung about 200 times, but it's bloody mint, so I don't care. It's, uh, no, it's, 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 they'll be singing all night, they will. What did you make of that situation with the uh, the song being kind of phased out? Oh, just it is what it is. It's um, it's the modern day, it's the modern day thing, and it's so it's yeah. It, but yeah, it's that I don't know. It's looking back at certain films and then banning stuff stuff from certain films because they, they could be offensive and stuff. Or there's murder in the films, like the Jason Bourne films, that just ban them because people get killed. And you know what I mean, so it's 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 one of them. But now nah, it's. It's probably just sensationalism over over something very small. Are you uh, are you keeping an eye on what's going on with the British title? Yeah, I just I just I just keep an eye on all boxing. I do. I have a little like, look what's going on because obviously Denzel's fighting. Is it fifteenth of April? Something. Yeah, like that. yeah. He's on the Joyce yeah. Zhang show. Yeah, he's got he's got that Kieran Smith. So I think that'll um will that be his second defense of the title. It's a good question, and I'm glad you asked. I, uh, I, I think so. I think I think I think, I think, I think that might be second defense of the title, possibly. Possibly, I'm not too sure, but but yeah. So obviously, then his next fight will be to obviously own it outright. So yeah, he's um, he's doing very well, doing very well. But are you is it sort of on your radar? Yeah, I wish you were smoking. Yeah. You know, yeah, I've got, yeah, I've got yeah, to ask yeah, it and yeah, figure yeah, it out. Yeah, I think it's always been said I'd love to fight for the British title. So yeah, that's that's something that I would love to fight for. And and if obviously Denzel's still the champion, which I believe he will be. Uh, yeah, I'd love that opportunity. Let's talk about these these fans that we're going to see uh, again on on March the twenty fifth. Now, the last time I was in Telford and your fans were there, there was a bit of bread that got chucked. Actually, several bits of bread which got sort of chucked ringside. What on earth is going on? Why do people do yeah, this? It's just, it's just, yeah, they're just um. It's a stoke thing, so I'll just sing bread, bread. You you supposed to sing it dead slow. Who will buy my bread? And they're singing that long ones, short ones. It's a bit random. And then as so, you're singing it, you just throw a load of bread. So that's why when you were there, there's got some bread got thrown and got stuck to the lights. So yeah, that was the the origin of that, mate. So people bring random. loads of I mean, yeah, it's it's very random. People bring essentially loaves of bread with them to fight night in the yeah, event of not that. Always, not, not always. They didn't like that, though. So fair play. Fair play. Okay. Well, um, I'm, I'm looking forward to more bread on the, on the 25th. Nathan, final yeah. one before I let you go. What's your message to Jack Flatley ahead of a fight that he believes he was winning the first time round? He believes he's coming to get what was his from the first time. What's your message to him? Uh, th- 
just I, I'm looking forward to seeing you on Friday night. Obviously, I'll see him in the press conference. Not as as mates, obviously. I just I think he's gonna be a great fighter. I'm, I I know he's gonna put be putting the work in. I I I'm putting the work in. I just obviously, as I mentioned before, I like to keep things quiet. I do. I put a little few sparring partners out there. What I'm doing, but I, I don't really share anything that I'm doing. But I'm a, I'm a grafter, putting all the work in, and obviously, yeah, just uh, I I wish I had all the best, but but hopefully the right man will win on the night. Okay, so you missed you sort of quite nice, really. I'll see you in a couple of weeks, mate. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not like it's not like I'm gonna absolutely bash you up, like, but it's um, but I'll try my best to bash him up. Do you know what I mean? To make no mistake, but we just, we just, we'll just say I think it's, I think it's gonna be a great fight. Nice. I think the atmosphere is gonna be great. I think the fight's gonna be great. I think he's gonna have things he's gonna be working on to nullify my strengths. But then, but then, are we gonna do the reverse of that and then and then nullify his defenses to that? He, he makes for a great fight, and and yeah, and then obviously. Everything that builds up on the back of that winning that fight for me. And obviously, if he wants to, have it. but the thing is, I'm, I'm there to be the champion. And there's some great things that are going to build off the back of me winning the title. So that, that's the only plan that I've got. Brilliant. Well, I can't wait for it. March 25th coming up live on BT Sport. Nathan, the hitman Healy, Stokes on to, to Marvin Hagler, headlines for the first time. How about it? it sounds good, right? Yeah, it sounds great, mate. And uh, yeah, it's 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 phenomenal. I'm I'm very proud. Obviously, you think it don't feel two seconds ago that obviously I first got signed with Queens. Queen, obviously, we did the, the first interview, and then it, yeah, it's it's madness. It's, I love I've loved every second. Obviously, I want to thank Queensby Promotions. Obviously, Frank yourself, me manager Errol Johnson, and obviously all my supporters because without every single one of them, like like I say yourselves and me supporters, I wouldn't be where I am. And and Steve Woodvine as well, my coach. He's one of my best friends. And the most incredible man you could ever have in your in your corner, and and he'll do everything he can to make sure I am the champion. Top man, we look forward to it, Nathan. Thank you so much for speaking to me. And I'll, I'll let you get back to your to your dinner tonight. To me, to me mad family, mate, because the girls are <laughs> mental. <laughs> so, no, no, thank you very much, Steph. You were See you later, mate.